All right, in this next section, let's get into the sensing blocks. We're gonna go into this light blue category over here, and let's just uh, briefly discuss each of these blocks here. All right, first off, we have touching, and then we have got a drop down menu, and we've got mouse pointer as the default option. If I double click this, it will be false, but um, basically, if the cat is touching my mouse pointer, then it will be true. So what I can do is I can just forever when flag click, I can just always say whether or not I'm touching the mouse pointer. So right now he's saying false because my mouse is not on him, but once I move my mouse on him, then it will be true. Off, false, on, true, makes sense. We can switch this to edge. We can drag our cat. Right now it's in the center, so it's not touching the edge. Once, once it touches the edge, then it will be true. All right, makes sense. Now this touching block also works with new sprites. Say we add some bananas into the mix. Uh, this is a completely new sprite, so if we go back to our cat, we can also change this and bananas will be one of the options. So say whether or not it's touching bananas. Right now it's not touching bananas, but once we move it on top, it says he's touching bananas. All right, so that's how that sensing block works. That's the touching block. Next, we can have touching color. Now you can use this color picker and choose a color. For example, if we want to just touch uh, the yellow color of the banana. So then it will say false because obviously it's not touching yellow. But as soon as it touches the yellow color of the banana, it will. Now, notice that it is touching the banana, the black part, but not the yellow part. So you can detect very specific colors. And these colors can also work with the pen blocks if you've already discovered that section. And they even work with blocks in any single sprite. So that's touching color. Uh, let me grab that color again and just leave this off to the side. You can also have this block, which color blank is touching other color. So if the color of our sprite is touching this color. So for example, if our white part, if the white part of our cat is touching the yellow part of the banana. So I'm touching the banana, I'm touching the yellow part right now, but only the black part of my foot and the orange part of my cat is touching it. None of the white parts of the cat are actually touching the yellow. But if I put the mouth of the cat on it, then our white part overlaps the yellow part and it is touching it. So that's when you get a specific color from your sprite and it's touching another color. This one we can get the distance to an object. Right now it sets to mouse pointer. So once my mouse is specifically like exactly on the cat, the distance would be zero, which is kind of hard to find, but it's really low. You see I got it to one. But once it's really far away, that's when the distance is really long far. You can also do distance to other sprites like the bananas. They're 178. 0.01 pixels away. If I move the banana away, the distance gets farther, and if I move the cat away, the distance also gets farther. Uh, this next block is really handy. Um, you can ask questions, what's your name, and then you can get user input in here. My name is Bob, and once you press enter, that is stored in this reporter called answer which means that you could say the answer to the question. What's your name? Notice that the answer clears as soon as you ask the question. Once you press enter, then the answer is updated, updated and I should probably make him say it for more, the, more time than, uh, you know, for like one second or two seconds. Now he says Bob for two seconds, so it can be used after you get that answer. And then once you ask another question, you can change that answer. Like that. So that's very useful. Those are the ask and answer er, blocks. Uh, next up on sensing, we've got the key. You can get um, whether or not key space is pressed. So if I'm pressing it right now, it says true, and I let go, and it says false. I can do the up arrow, false, I'm pressing up arrow now, and it says true. And you can do this with any arrow or letter or number key. So for example, the three key. I'm not pressing it right now, but now I'm pressing it. Cool. 
So it's true or false whether or not you're pressing a key. Next, we've got the mouse down key, and this just means whether or not you're pressing the mouse. So right now, I'm not pressing the mouse, but once I click it, then it says true, false, true. All right. Most of these are pretty straightforward. And remember that, uh, okay, never mind. Uh, that was the mouse down. Next, we have mouse X and mouse Y. I'm not going to go over these in this video, but we will find them out in the coordinate system video. All right, loudness, you have to allow your microphone, which I'm going to allow to use my microphone and camera. All right, so loudness is how loud you're talking. Now, right now, it looks like it's between zero and one. And you can see it got up to 11 and even 20, I think. Uh, so, yeah, I guess this microphone is a lot quieter than other microphones. <laughs> I hope this video isn't too loud. But how loud can I get this? If I get really close, I can get it all the way up to the hundreds. All right. Yeah. So you can get the loudness from the speaker, which could be an interesting idea for a game. Next, we've got video. So in order to, to use this block, we first we have to turn the video. Well, you can turn it on or off. First, you have to turn the video on. All right, so this is what the video motion looks like. I had to turn my camera. I had to turn my camera off for a second, so I just transition. So you can set the video transparency here. So if I want it to hide, then I would, or I guess if I want it to be completely shown, then I do zero percent. And if I want it to be completely transparent, I do one hundred percent, and that would make me disappear. Let's go back to 50% so that we can see what's going on. There I am again. All right, so it looks like we can get the video motion on this sprite. Now, it looks, I don't know exactly how this, uh, can we say? Oh, I need to start the script actually. Okay, so the video motion on this sprite is like between zero and it's like a pretty small number. But once I move my hand on him, on the actual cat sprite, then you can see that number goes up. Now, I'm moving it over here, it's not. So you can actually interact with objects to get the motion on them. So uh, that, that would be a cool tool if you want to make something that interacts with the actual camera. So you can turn the video on. Now, let's see. Right now, the, okay, yeah, right now I think the video is flipped. Well, I know, actually. Right now, when the video is on, I'm pointing left, and it's pointing left on the screen. So that is what you'd expect. That's pretty good. Um, but if you want it flipped, then you double click, and now it's the flipped version. I'm pointing left, but it's pointing right on the screen. So yeah. So, and you can also turn it back off if you don't want to get that. And then the video motion just ends up being negative one. So that's how those video blocks work. Let me go turn on my camera again, so just give me one sec. All right, I'm back. That was the video motion and video motion blocks, and we had the loudness block. Next, we've got this timer block. Uh, I'm just going to untick those. We've got timer. Oh, one more thing let me just mention. You could also get the direction of the motion, and you could get the motion for others, for the stage. Um, Okay, so the timer is constantly going as soon as you click the flag. It restarts as soon as you click the flag and starts at zero, and it counts up. Um, and then you can reset the timer. So I could just save the timer, even though we've got it up there for being recorded. When I can reset the timer by double clicking, and it goes back to zero. So if you ever need to time something, uh, you can do it this way. That's pretty helpful. Down here, we've got this block, and you can get you can get the exposition of other sprites, right? So you can get of the stage, well, you can't get the exposition of the stage. We'll talk about that later. So you can get the actual backdrops of the stage. So that's the, right now it's the backdrop number one. You can get the direction of the banana sprite, which will just return, if I go to the info, 90. So you can get variables and things from other objects from other sprites. We'll, we'll probably use this later. We don't use it too much though. Uh, down here we can get the current minute year. Well, I guess I have to... Oh, that's weird. Okay, yeah. 
it can get all this current data. I'm just going to double click on it. So right now the current year is 2017. Uh, as I'm recording this, the month is the 12th month, so it's December. The date is 27th, that's correct. The day of week is the fourth day of the week. Yep. That <laughs> um, the hour is the 13th hour, so it's base 24, it's like military time, so the 13th hour. You could just subtract 12 and it's 1 o'clock. Um, the current minute is the 53rd minute, and the current second is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> you get the idea. So you can get the current time. You can also get the days since 2000, since the year 2000. Don't know how useful that is or exactly why you'd want to do that, but you can do that. It gives you this weird decimal too. Anyways, and you can finally get the username. So this gets the scratch username of whoever is viewing your project, which is a pretty cool block. So you can use that for, I don't know, just making things more personal and making it talk to their actual username. You could have like an animation interact with you, or you could use it for like more complicated things like saving user data and stuff. But that is for another time. All right, this is an overview of the sensing blocks. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.